We live in a representative democracy. The problem being that this representative democracy is neither representative or democratic. It's the 1% problem. You might be thinking about the richest 1% of the world's population. Between 2020 and 2023, their share of the increase in the world's wealth was twice as much as the other 99% of us added together. This inequality in the distribution of wealth to the 1% might seem extraordinary. That's not the 1% I'm talking about. I'm talking about the 1% of British voters who are members of political parties. These are the people who gave the rest of us a choice between Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn for Prime Minister at the 2019 election. This 1% are the people who decide who can stand as candidates to become MPs. We might be able to choose between the parties, but we don't get to choose who can stand for election. That's decided by party members, something that 99% of us have decided not to be. We know this, but we can't do anything about it because we're not a free people. We are subjects. The subjects not of a king or queen, but the subjects of an unrepresentative parliament. Those who claim to represent us in our various parliaments make the rules for us and they make the rules for themselves. A free people, I'll refer to them as citizens in this video, as we don't seem to have a word for a free person. A free people will be part of the decision making process. They will be able, with their fellow citizens, to decide what laws we have and what laws we don't have. There is only one country in the world whose people are free, Switzerland, and it's their unique ability to initiate referendums to both create laws that they want and stop laws that they don't want that mean they are citizens rather than subjects. It seems that this freedom leads to a couple of interesting outcomes unique to Switzerland. The first one is Article 6 of the Swiss Constitution. Most constitutions contain sections about the right to free speech, the right to vote, the freedom of the press, etc. But before the list of rights in the Swiss Constitution, there is Article 6. Article 6 states that all individuals shall take responsibility for themselves and shall, according to their abilities, contribute to achieving the tasks of the state and society. That's so important, I'm going to repeat it. All individuals shall take responsibility for themselves and shall, according to their abilities, contribute to achieving the tasks of the state and society. That's the law, but it's more than that. It's their law. A law they choose to keep. If they didn't want it, they could get rid of it. That's what makes it their law, rather than the law. Does the acceptance of this responsibility and the actions that flow from this contribute to the happiness, wealth and health of both the individual and the country? Many would think so. Perhaps that's something the think tanks can look into. The other unique aspect of Swiss life is the absence of an honours system. I'm talking about things like peerages, knighthoods, MBEs and OBEs. Is that because they have Article 6, a responsibility to contribute to the success of their society according to their ability? If you're Swiss and you contribute to the health, wealth and happiness of your country, you're not doing something that deserves honours. You're simply doing what Swiss citizens are supposed to do. It's different for us. When a parliament is the sovereign power in a country, the country is the politician's responsibility. It has to be. Subjects have little or no control over what the politicians do. We can make a difference, and we do, mainly at a social level, by helping run everything that's outside of the remit of government, local or national. But what happens when we are the sovereign power in the land? when we have that responsibility. We can see an example of what happens in the way the Swiss people involve themselves in their political system. In Britain, we have that 1% who join the parties, too small a percentage to make sure that the political system works for the people of Britain rather than the parties and those who fund them. Too small a percentage to keep the dishonest and incompetent out, as we've seen. I've seen figures that suggest around 7% of Swiss voters are members of political parties, a huge and important difference. It's the difference between a free people who work to create a successful society in their country, Switzerland, and a disillusioned and detached public, the subjects of our parliaments and the politicians in them, that we see here in Britain, a country that is not our country.